Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. When an engine blew on the Airbus that United Airlines Captain Ed Palacio was flying, the instrument panel lit up like a Christmas tree. Ed, I later asked as we were talking about the incident, what did you think about when this happened? His reply, I didn't have time to think. I instinctively did what I had been trained to do. His passengers were glad, too, that Ed hadn't been sleeping in the class where they covered those procedures. He was so well-trained and disciplined, his reactions were instinctive and habitual. Do an experiment for a minute. Fold your hands together. Now, if you're driving right now, you're exempted from this one, but if you can, yes, fold your hands together. Now look at them. Now unfold them and do it again. I'll tell you one thing for sure. Should you do this a hundred times, you will do the same thing exactly a hundred times. It's a habit, and a long-standing one, too. Habit is the flywheel of society. It keeps the fishermen at sea in the winter. It keeps the miner going down in the shaft into darkness day after day. It sends the farmer to his fields no matter what the weather, and keeps the prostitute on the street, and the alcoholic and addict looking for a bottle or a fix. Habit, of course, works both ways. There are good ones and not so good ones. Years ago, a Harvard University psychology professor, William James, wrote, If we realize the extent to which we are mere walking bundles of habit, we would give more heed to their formation. We are spinning our own fates, he wrote, good or evil and never to be undone. Walk into an auditorium you've never been in before and sit down. Come back a week later, where do you sit? Exactly in the same spot you were the week before. After three times, you're hooked. You park in the same spot, sit in the same seat, eat at the same restaurant. You do the same thing time after time, month after month, year after year. Question. Are you a victim of your habits? Or can you change habits? Is the potato chip addict stuck for life, as is the woman who can't live without her TV soaps and her vodka? No, habits can be broken. But if they are, it is because of strong motivation, something stronger than the force of habit which created motivation to change. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Being a new person, a new creature, should mean new habits. The following guidelines can help you. Number one, break with old habits decisively. Don't cut a dog's tail off an inch at a time. The Ephesians burned their magic books in one great fire. Draw a line and by the grace of God cross over it never to return. Don't even look back. Guideline number two, establish a new habit immediately. In the main, wrote Henry James, all experts agree that abrupt acquisition of the new habit is the best way. You'll also find God's help and strength, which takes you beyond where you are in the natural. There is God's help to overcome your failure. Guideline number three, go public with your commitment. Run up the flag, tell your friends, sign a pledge, paint a sign, fly a banner, but don't go back. Make a clean break with past habits and friends which drag you down. Nobody but you can do this, but you can. Guideline number four. Reach out and find God's strength. The Bible is full of promises for help. The power that works in you using the biblical phrase is the Holy Spirit. Its hand within gives you strength to be the person without. He makes the difference. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.